Valerie's Podcast, Kyle here with Dimitri, with a very excellent lineup in this very special Grab Bag News episode, which I will news, title news, later. News, news, news. Let's talk about the thing that everyone's talking about. Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Are they talking about that? Not for good reasons. <laughs> <laughs> People are bashing it, and what's his name? The actor, Shazam, when he's Shazam, not when he's a boy. He's on a little bit of a tirade of just, like, getting oddly defensive every time he's talking about the movie. He's anti-vax, so he's, like, defensive about that. He's defensive about the movie, which he knew was coming out, so, like, I don't know why he thought that people would be, like, hip, hip, hooray for Shazam 2 without Black Adam. And I don't know why he also is very defensive of any mention of The Rock. Are they enemies now? I don't know what they are. They're bad publicity slamming each other in hopes that good publicity allows them to do another movie together. It makes sense, but it's not going to happen. (laughs) It shouldn't happen. Yeah, I don't know what that real drama is. Part of me thinks most of it's fake. The whole, oh, Black Adam was supposed to have Shazam, but The Rock refused it and he refused to show up in Shazam. And, you know, I'm still going to come back and future James Gunn projects like no you're not so the actress that plays Mary Marvel she actually did an interview they were like oh like why did you want this role and she was like I needed a job it was some money yeah like, clearly it was just had, money had bills she looks like she could be Wonder Woman like she just fits and that actress also was a recast from the Mary Marvel in the prior Shazam movie so that's another interesting tidbit anyway I didn't sense. see the movie I never planned to see the movie but it's over now, and it's somehow, flat. even though it's over, they had a end credit scene that they could have easily cut out that tied in the Justice Society, not the Justice League, and guess who showed up, which makes things even more confusing. James Gunn's wife. I'm cool with it. She can be the Coulson of the DCU. No problem. I like but that. why in this movie? Why is it not happening in the future? Anyway, that's enough about DCU for now. I don't know if we even need to go back to it at all to be honest maybe a little at the end just a tiny bit okay but just a little so captain america new world order had some photos leak from set a few takeaways actually more takeaways than you would expect from just a few set photos but for one they're at a funeral you can speculate on that in a second more importantly betty ross from the incredible hulk is there which is Liv tyler as in steven tyler's daughter from aerosmith and also She was in Lord of the Rings. Anyway, she's back, meaning her connection is clearly there because of her father, Thunderbolt Ross, who will be Red Hulk or Rolk. So that's clearly why she's there. And she's at a funeral in the photo we've seen. And Captain America's arm is broken. Speculation. Captain America gets into some kind of brawl. He's fighting alongside Thunderbolt Ross in some kind of skirmish. They're together trying to stop something. Something happens to Ross. They think he's dead. They have a funeral. And then months later, he surfaces as the Red Hulk with no mustache. If I'm being honest, I hope they give us less of him as they Mm. can to then have it bleed over into Thunderbolts. Which is yet to be confirmed that he's in that. And we're assuming off a modern run. We don't know how strictish they're going to try and be, even though the lineup they showed is not accurate at all. It's kind of a sloppy mess. Overall, though, I think that this Captain America movie might feel like a Hulk movie without the Hulk. We know the leader's in it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Again, was the Hulk villain. He's also reprising his role, am I right? That actor. Yeah. That's cool. Do we think that Hulk will actually show up, though? I don't think so. To me, his character does not fit the vibe that I'm immediately getting from this movie. Because the way Falcon and Winter Soldier was, much more of a serious tone. It just feels less serious than what they're doing with Hulk acting. They feel more like an action movie when Hulk now feels more like comedy. But they have to fix that. Do they if now they're going to have Red Hulk? Why can't he remain as comedy and have Red Hulk be the more serious? You think that Thunderbolt Ross could be the more serious tone to whatever they're doing in the grand scheme of things. And Hulk, with whatever he's doing, can just keep doing his comedy well, they have to, because the next thing he shows up in isn't going to be She-Hulk season two, right? Because there isn't one. Maybe you're right. Maybe this gives an opportunity for Hulk to go back to Hulk and not be Professor Hulk. What if Red Hulk is enraged, evil, evil and enraged and out of control, and the only one that can stop him is the OG Hulk, who in his professor form can't pull it off. And it's kind of like one of those situations of like, well, science first, but this one time, the only thing that's going to stop 
him is him you know and then he just does something in the lab and I, then he's big again i hate to say it but i hope like red hulk beats his ass the first time and then i gotta let hulk be hulk you know i can't be the hulk the hulk has to be hulk and yeah. then hulk takes over and just doesn't let banner do anything else i mean i'm cool with red hulk being our big brute of the mcu like i'm cool with that i think that harrison ford is going to kill the role i don't know if you've been watching a shrinking on apple tv no so he's in that and he plays a psychiatrist who kind of like runs the office but you know it's like old and grumpy but like he fits that like his humor is so dry and perfect i could see that working as like a general I don't know how he's going to be when he's hulked out. Like, I don't really know how that works. How is he going to look? Like, I'm so concerned of how his face is going to look. That's my biggest concern. Like, how do you yeah. take Harrison Ford, such a household name? Not even a Hulk, but a red version of him that has, like, fire powers. I don't know. The Modoc situation was... um criminal overall i mean this is speculation off the fact that i think the rumors and from the pictures and from the casting that this could be very much a hulk movie starring captain america it's not the worst thing is it no and it doesn't on a line for the fact that the end of the day captain america is super soldier and hulk came to be for them trying to replicate super soldier the same way that wolverine came to be so the other rumor spinning out of one of pierre's instagrams that he made me follow is that not one but two X-Men will show up. So the obvious, like I was just explaining, would be Wolverine because Super Soldier attempt number three. I don't know what the other X-Men could be, but... Maybe Rogue. Hmm. Putting some connection. I mean, I don't know if they're going to do all that, but if they put some connection from Rogue here to the Marvels, it would make sense for the year. Yeah. Which comes out first? Does the Marvels come out first? I think they push the Marvels. So then there's Guardians and then there's Loki and then there's Secret Invasion. I have no idea what they're doing with that. I'm hopeful for it because two that's kind of like a unfamiliar part of marvel like i never really read scrolls or secret invasion anything so to me it's gonna be very very fresh i always liked as a playable character in marvel versus capcom uh, super Super scroll Scroll. i always thought like when are they doing that i used to have a hero click that i think jeremiah gave to me actually and it was just the coolest little thing the scrolls by themselves are pretty cool looking but like having a rock fist and like his left foot's invisible and he's stretching (laughs) one arm and that arm that's swinging around to punch you is also on fire it's just cool a nice idea and i think they've done it with like a whole bunch of other power sets too where like scrolls have like three or four heroes powers oh. yeah i forgot about super scroll he's pretty necessary at some point like they better bring him so. in they have to getting back to new world order i believe the rumor was that they're supposed to find adamantium where one of the celestials is there like oh. a celestial's arm coming out of the and they actually like talk about that Yeah, that would make Eternals not be completely useless of a movie. But Black Knight, which was Kit Harington in Eternals, apparently his spots in the Blade movie have been removed from the script. That's weird. Yeah. I like the actor, obviously, because just everyone's a Game of Thrones fan except you. Is there a list of end credits that go nowhere for Marple? Yeah, like dead end end credits. I'm sure there is. So wait, when he gets the sword? Yeah. Again, Black Knight, not on my radar, but now Blade, on the other hand, I hope this movie gets made and gets made right because there's just never anything good coming out of it. I have no hopes. When you have a movie somewhat going and then stop, and then have to start again, it doesn't yeah. look good. I mean, the um, actor choice is perfect. Yeah, I mean, but that's all they have right now. Back to your point about Game of Thrones, I like it less because I feel as though, and probably going forward, this is a whole other topic that I'm just going to touch on. I feel as though HBO should have given The Last of Us a bigger budget, but I feel as though season two will get the biggest budget. If you're going to give Game of Thrones that kind of money, you should give The Last of Us that kind of money. So that's all. We can okay. talk about other stuff. We got more right. rumors? What other X-Men <laughs> would you think could possibly show up if that rumor is even true just to speculate on a speculation okay so i would say rogue if it's not rogue mystique would be stupid i'm over her to be honest the comics great movies i'm over her what if she just fucks up shit with scrolls it's like oh it wasn't a scroll it was mystique (laughs) right there you just debunk the whole thing (laughs) shit going on you debunk the whole thing they're not going to do mystique when they're going to go heavy on scrolls now well i guess heavy is not the word last time i said heavy in a clip that i put someone was mean to me on youtube (laughs) and then when i tried to like get sympathy from you know the rest of you one of you i won't say who but it was pierre was like well they're not wrong (laughs) who do you think it could be i kind of thought maybe a deadpool just because he's technically number four of trying to make super soldiers i like that 
That's a good one. I don't know if it fits with the tone that I'm assuming this movie's going to have. Oh, take out Rogue. I got a new one. Omega Red. There have been talks about him for a while, and it mm. stopped. I don't know how long ago, but like it just stopped. He was supposed to be cameoed or somewhat had to do with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It just never happened, and no one talks about it. But I would assume, make that something. Make that important. And that also has a lot to do with the adamantium. That I'm not sure about, but you're making me remember something. I helped a friend send an Omega Red first appearance to get signed by Jim Lee, and that was like two years ago, and I'm certain he didn't get it back. I'm going to have to reach out and check with him. He would have sent me a picture, because if not, I'm going to help him out there, because that's kind of ridiculous. That's a good idea. And especially now, if you're right in any sense, which again, I would say that's another character where we know the X-Men are coming. How are they not going to do Omega Red? But yeah, as far as the movie goes, I guess someone else that would tie to Super Soldier. My guess is a really Wolverine and Deadpool. My guess would be Wolverine and Omega Red. Rogue isn't bad though, because they need to bring Rogue in for Marvels. Unless they're going a whole nother way with the Marvels. I gotta say this nicely. I don't not have concerns <laughs> for the Marvels. <laughs> I feel like they pushed it. Didn't they push it? So a little more Marvel news. Demetrius Grassi has been cast as Grim Reaper in the Wonder Man series. Absolutely all I have for you. The Grim Reaper story with Wonder Man or one of them is the only one that I'm familiar with, which I believe you read too in Uncanny Avengers back in the day when Remender was writing it. I don't know. For the life of me, I just don't remember. I didn't like it the first time. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got for you. I haven't seen the actor in anything, but apparently he's a A plus. So Grim Reaper it is. Now as promised, DC News. Before I go into that, actually, let me talk about Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy, the comic, just won a GLAAD award, which is great. So I read the original art. As you know, I bought a page from issue five. You did? I'm now seeping out past the original arc, which was never intended to be. I'm on like issue eight, whatever the app is giving me. It is fantastic. The art, Marcio is like perfect. G Willow is so fucking good on Poison Ivy. Like just so good. There's no other way she should be written. Poison Ivy is supposed to be a villain and she has her be a hero who if you get in her way, sees you as a human, therefore you are trash. Damn. So she's just like, oh, spores. Psh, you're dead. But I thought Batman's supposed to stop that. It's just about her like traveling, trying to infect people and like hooking up along the way and like feeling guilty because she's still in love with Harley Quinn. And yeah, she's just killing people to like get her end goal. But all right, I will ruin this. So this is major spoiler for the end of the first arc of Poison Ivy. So issue six, the way she defeats Woodrow, which is a Swamp Thing villain who yeah. I didn't know. I think it was retconned is technically who created Poison Ivy. I need to look this up. Anyway, she defeats him by dropping a building on them both and then eats him. Like, starts with his heart and then eats his whole body. Now, he's basically like Swamp Thing. Like, he's basically a plant creature, but his heart wasn't. <laughs> she just <laughs> eats him. That's how the first arc ends. And now it's continuing on of her trying to, like, clean up other issues because she thought she was going to die and she didn't. So now she's trying to, like, do something good, but still cool with killing people along the way. Shit. I think it's great. I like it. One of my top books right now. All right. So lastly, let's wrap this up with the rumor, which wasn't a rumor. And then I did some more research, 100% a rumor. So this Clayface definite big part in The Batman 2, it wasn't even worthy of a clickbait title. It was incorporated in an article that there originally was a Clayface script written that they didn't use, but they think they're going to use parts of and inspire to put the character as the main villain in The Batman 2. Probably bullshit for the simple fact of Matt Reeves, to me, seems to be following the footsteps of Nolan verse with there's nothing magical here like no metahumans it's not gonna go that realm in my opinion but to play with this rumor how could they do clayface productively in the batman 2 he can like impersonate people am i right yeah my first is like okay he's just a shapeshifter and he frames bruce wayne for killing somebody i don't see them ever doing a full out hulking clayface form i don't see clayface being anything more than a shapeshifter and at some point having a half melted face to show it's Clayface. That's the farthest I think they'll push any kind of, as you said, metahuman or superpowers even. I don't like it. I don't see them doing a giant CGI monster in this. Like, I just don't see it. My only ideas for a sequel have to do with the Mr. Freeze. I think that's the given, in my opinion. That's the one that's the easy one to do. But I want Dave Batista as Mr. Freeze in almost like Gears of War type armor, keeping him frozen. <laughs> right. And then, you know, his love interest can't come out. And it being Wayne Enterprise's fault. Yeah. She's in there 
there and his research is ending so he can't even keep her alive anymore. I think that's the given story. It just works. Now, could Clayface be a side character who's... I don't know. If it's not Clayface being a shapeshifter, if it's not Mr. Freeze with the origin story of him and it being Wayne Enterprise's fault, I think the given is Hush. And they're going to literally follow to the T the Hush story and then add an hour and a half of extra footage that you don't need in the movie. Is that what he's known for? Bad Reeps? Now he's extra. That's what I've decided. I just feel like they all are at this point. You could say the same thing about Zack Snyder. All this extra footage, old movie redone with more time didn't really get us anywhere. I did enjoy the Snyder Cut, though. I did. But... It felt very large. I agree. The Batman just felt very long. It did. One day, when I'm, like, old and still talking shit about all this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like, recut movies that I say are bad and try and make them good from editing. <laughs> and then release cool. them to, like, the last three followers we have. <laughs> and we'll have a little Discord chat about, like, a re- That's what I will do when I retire. Anyway, Pound Podcast. I've gotten so many complaints for the intro music. <laughs> the very few people that have listened have complained. Tatoids. This is Kyle. Yep. The white right. and yes. the black is Dimitri. <laughs> so for audio purposes, I'm going to do that over again. Yeah, that's a good idea. Tatoid. This is what grandma used to call you. Demetrius. <laughs> she did. She did. I miss it.